Hey everybody and welcome back to What's Still and Doing. It's a show about things that I've got going on in my life. I've had a fantastic day so far. I woke up and had breakfast with my wife and I ordered enough food to feed an army. And I ate it all and now I'm exhausted and I'm ready for a nap. But before I head off to slumberland... Pajama, 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 pajama. Pajama, 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 pajama. I've got a project that I'd like to share with you guys. Today we're going to be working on an antiqued mirror, a distressed mirror for the Potter House room. Actually, two mirrors. One of them is for um, a cabinet that I have in the room that I've actually already done this to, but I didn't like the way that it looked in the end. So I'm going to be redoing that, and then I'm going to be doing an additional mirror that's just going to be hanging on the wall. It's super easy. It's super fun. Anybody can do this, and I'm going to show you guys that process step by step so you can do this at home if you'd like, because it looks awesome, and like I said, anybody can do it. So... I'm going to show you guys the products that I'm going to be using to make this happen, and then I'm going to go outside and get started, and then I'm going to take a nap because I'm exhausted and my belly is full. Let's do it. Okay guys, so the products that I'm going to be using today is this spray bottle. It contains two parts water, one part vinegar, and I am using white vinegar because that's what I had laying around the house. I suppose you could use any kind of vinegar, apple cider, really anything, uh, but it's one part vinegar, two parts water. And then I also have this Rust-Oleum brand mirror effect spray paint. There are several different brands of spray paint that make this mirror effect stuff, but this is the one that I found uh, at Home Depot, super cheap. I think it was like four or five dollars for this can. It's not a large can, but you really don't need all that much. Uh, essentially, you can transform any glass surface into a mirror with this spray paint and it looks phenomenal. In addition to that, I've got some uh, satin finish or matte colored uh, black spray paint. And I have some uh, satin finished gray spray paint. I suppose you could use gloss, but I don't think it would look as good, at least for the application that we're going to be using it for. So I would stick to the matte finish. I also have some paper towels and some trash bags, and I've made sure the area that I'm going to be working in is nice and uh, clean. This is a super, super messy pro uh, project. You could use rubber gloves. In fact, I probably recommend using rubber gloves, but I never use rubber gloves. One reason why is because my hands are massive and I can't find a rubber glove that fits my hands. But also, I just really don't care that much. But if you don't use rubber gloves, your hands are gonna look chrome, bright chrome. So it's up to you if you decide you wanna use rubber gloves or not, but I do not have any today. So yeah, I'm gonna go outside and get set up and we'll get started. All right guys, I've got everything prepped and cleaned and ready to go. You definitely wanna take some time to make sure that the surface you're painting on is nice and clean and free of any kind of debris or hair or dirt because we're gonna be spray painting on it and once that spray paint is dry, you will not be able to remove those things. You will see them and it's gonna drive you nuts. So definitely take some time to make sure that the surface is nice and clean and ready to receive some paint. You will notice I have a small pane of glass next to the door that I'm working on and it does have black paint on it. However, that's on the underside of the glass and I'm not going to be painting that side of the glass. So I'm not really worried about making sure that that surface is clean, just the areas that are going to be receiving paint today. So once I've got that all cleaned up and ready to go, I can start laying down the vinegar water solution. And this part is very important. It's kind of hard to explain, so bear with me. I'm gonna do the best that I can. So this vinegar water solution, you've kind of got to think of it like masking tape. So when you're painting, you're putting masking tape on all the surfaces that you don't want paint to bleed onto, right? So when you're spraying this solution down, you have to think of it as those are the areas that are not going to be receiving paint. So for instance, I've decided that all of the surfaces in the center, I want to have a nice smooth reflective mirror uh, effect on it. And then all of the edges surrounding the center of the mirror, that's where I want my distressing to be. So that's where I'm gonna spray all of my vinegar solution. Now, if you're wanting to do this and you're wanting the entire surface to be aged and have distressing all over the surface of the mirror, then go ahead and spray the whole thing. But you have to be conscious of where you're spraying this vinegar because that's where your distress marks are gonna be. So like I said, if you want the whole thing to be completely distressed, then spray the whole thing with a vinegar solution. But if you only want distressing in certain areas, then only spray those areas with that vinegar solution. But once you've got it all laid down, once you got the vinegar where you want it, then you're going to do a nice even coat of that mirrored effect spray paint over the entire surface. And once you've got that done, you're immediately going to grab some paper towels and start dapping up all of that vinegar solution. You're not going to wait for the paint to dry, you're going to go straight into it. So what this does is, 
you're gonna remove that vinegar, but in the spots where the vinegar was at, there's not gonna be any paint there. See what I mean? It's just like masking tape. It's like liquid masking tape. So you're gonna start dapping up all of that vinegar solution, and that's gonna leave you all these distress marks. There's gonna be smudges, there's gonna be speckles, you know, just places where it looks like the mirror has chipped, like it's starting to decay or slowly fall apart. And that's the look that we're going for. So I say this is the most important part because really getting that vinegar where you want it, getting that liquid masking tape where you want it, is really gonna pay off in the end. So you gotta really be conscious of where you're laying it down before you commit to the spray paint. Now, if you've found that there's too much distressing in a certain area, you can always just hit it again with the mirrored effect spray paint and get rid of some of it. But you can't do the opposite of that. You can't remove some of the mirrored uh, spray paint to add more distressing. It doesn't work that way. So just be careful when you're doing this part. Like I said, it's very important, but just have fun with it. I'm going into this as my, a second attempt for this door. So I kind of have a better idea of how I want this to lay out or how it works. So it might take you a couple attempts, but just play around with it and have fun. Lay it out the best you can. You can remove some, you can spray a little bit more, just work in increments. You'll get there eventually. So I've got my door done, I've got the distress marks exactly where I want them, I've got smooth reflective surfaces exactly where I want them. And I'm going to move on to my smaller pane of glass, which is the exact same process. I've already got my vinegar solution sprayed out, I'm doing a nice even coat of the mirror finish. And I again want the nice smooth reflective surface in the center and all of my distress marks around the outside. Something that's definitely worth mentioning though, the first time that I did this, I was using paper towels that were like that thick quilted pattern. And when I was dapping up the vinegar solution, you could see the pattern of the paper towel in the paint. So you kind of want to be conscious about what kind of paper towels you're using. Definitely go with something that has like a more, um, like a smoother pattern to it. Of course, all paper towels have that like dimpled material or, or feel to them. Uh, but when it's less of a pattern, it's harder to see it in the paint. You're leaving stipples in this with that vinegar solution, so the paint's already gonna be spotted, but as long as there's not like a weird quilted pattern there, you really can't tell. You could also use like a washcloth or a lint-free rag. However, you won't be able to use it again after this project. You will have to throw that rag away. So in my opinion, it's probably best just to stick with the paper towels. We're completely done with our first few steps. We've got our mirrored surface done on there. It's dry, it's ready to go. So our next step is going to be sealing in the back with a certain color of paint. And really you can use any color of paint for this, but the point of it is to get, add like a background color. You don't want the distress marks in your mirror to look clear or see-through, because that's the state that they're in right now. You've got this nice reflective mirror uh, surface everywhere with spots throughout it. Your distress spots are completely clear and see-through because the paint did not go through our, our vinegar solution and you can see through those still. But you don't want them to be clear. It doesn't have the same effect that you're looking for when you're trying to make a distressed mirror. So you can use, like I said, you can use any color of paint that you want to get through this step. I have decided to go around the edges of the mirror with a flat black spray paint and then go through the center of it with a gray flat spray paint. And the reason I did that is because I wanted the color to progress. I wanted it to be nice and dark around the edges and then slowly get lighter towards the center of the mirror. But you can use whatever color you want. I've seen people use green. I've seen people use gold, which looks really, really cool. It's just not something that I wanted to do for this project, but it does look absolutely amazing. So feel free to play around with that as well. Just pick a couple colors and see what looks best for your project.
once I've got the door done, I'm gonna move back over to my smaller pane of glass. And this one, I'm not gonna use the two different colors of spray paint, I'm just gonna use black on this one because I want them to look different. I don't want them to look exactly the same or like they're matching or from a set, rather. Uh, so just to give this one a little more personality of its own, I'm gonna do the whole thing in black. And once again, I'm gonna make sure that the entire surface is completely covered in paint. Like I said, you don't wanna have those distressed spots look clear because it just, it just doesn't look like the effect that you're going for here. You need to have some kind of completely covered background cover over the mirror when you're done with it. So I'm gonna completely cover this with black spray paint, let it dry, and then I'll bring them inside and reassemble my projects and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. This is it, the finished product. This is my wall mirror, all framed and reassembled. You can see all of the distress marks we made today in the mirrored surface with that black spray paint color showing through all my distress marks. And that looks exactly how I was hoping it would look. Really, really good. And then right beside that, we have our cabinet door. And you can really tell the difference between the black undercoat that I did and right above it is this gray color. So it kind of just goes from the black into that gray color. And I think that looks fantastic. I'm really happy that I, that I decided to do that. Now another thing you might notice here is how grimy and dirty the surface looks. And what I did to achieve that is after I got everything reassembled, there's a clear wax furniture coat that I use to seal this, this the furniture that I paint. This is all, uh, it's called milk paint. And I seal it with a clear furniture wax. And I just applied some of that to the glass surface to get this foggy, gross look. <laughs> For lack of a better term. But it does look kind of gross, doesn't it? And that's, that's optional. You definitely don't have to do that. There's no, it's not sealing anything. There's, it's not necessary, but I just think it looks a lot cooler with it being all murky and stuff. You can really tell, like this patch here, there isn't any of that wax. But as opposed to up here, there's a lot of that furniture wax. So you can barely even see my face there, as opposed to like right down here, where there's less of that furniture wax, you can really see my face. So it does add a whole nother uh, grimy element to it. But again, that's optional. Definitely not necessary, but it works for what I'm going for. But that looks perfect, you guys. I really love all these distress marks. And some of them you have to get pretty close to it to see them. You know, like all of this on the sides here, it goes from that black into a light gray. Same thing over here, it starts off real dark and black, 
and then the distress marks get lighter into a light gray color and I just think that looks so cool. Before the whole cabinet door was covered in black distress marks and it was too much. You know this looks good down here in the corner but I'm glad I decided not to do it for the entire door. It just gives it a little more life you know a little more dimension and this being all black doesn't look bad it's just different it gives some difference between the two pieces that way they don't look identical but yeah that's it you guys it looks really really good very very happy with this very very happy with this So that's it for today you guys it was a super easy project anybody can do this it is so much fun to do it's messy it makes you feel like you're in craft class again i love it i absolutely love it and like i stated before the most important step in the process is the vinegar step you have to really be conscious of where you're spraying this if you only want the um, aging and uh, speckleage to be in one spot you only spray that one spot if you want it to be over the entire surface spray the entire surface but you really have to be conscious of where you're laying this before you put your mirror stuff down. But uh, other than that, it's super easy to do. Anybody can do it. Another thing worth mentioning is you have to make sure you're getting this mirror of effect spray paint. You definitely don't want to go get like a chrome colored spray paint because it's not going to look the same as this stuff does. So that's also pretty important. If you guys are planning on doing this at home, share it with me. I would love to see what you guys come up with. And I'm on all social media platforms. I'll link my social media stuff across the screen here. So you can follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Facebook, you can follow me on TikTok. I don't really post a lot on TikTok, but I do have one, and I'd love to see what you guys come up with. That would bring me so much joy. So that's gonna do it for today. As always, I really appreciate you guys being here. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. But yeah, until next time, I'm Dylan, and this is what I've been doing. I'll see you guys later.